up guys and welcome back to the channel and to another weekly running and training vlog where in this video every Monday I want you to tell me about your past week of running. I want to hear about your successes and I definitely want to hear about your setbacks. I'm going to be giving you a rundown of my week which is actually not really much to write home about as I'm still injured but there is a small update so stay tuned for a few minutes while I go into that but I did want to tell you guys about something because I found a fantastic article in Canadian Trail Runner magazine and it's about a study that identifies what type of runner you are. Now admittedly, this study was pretty small. It involved 14 trail runners as they covered a 44 kilometer trail run. And although the title of this article invites you to find out what type of trail runner you are, it definitely applies to all types of runners. So if you're a trail runner, fine. If you're a road runner, also fine. So before the race started, the researchers met with the participants and they filled out a sociological survey to determine the motivations of the runners. Now this was a 44 kilometer race, but it was a eight loop course. And after every loop, the participants took 10 minutes to talk to the researchers so they could have their rate of perceived exertion assessed and how much they were enjoying or not enjoying the race. Of course, 44 kilometers is quite a long way. We can imagine that people's happiness with the run would go like this, go up and down, as it does for all of us in these long races. Okay, this is where we're able to find out about what type of runner you and I are, because after the race, the researchers were able to identify three different types of runners. First one is the hedonists. Now, the researchers describe this as people who enjoy the landscape. They enjoy running and looking around and seeing nature's beauty. The second group were the resilience, and in the resilience group, they derive pleasure from overcoming life's adversities. I think it goes a little deeper than that, but we'll get to that in just a second. And the third group, the third group are the competitors and obviously they derive pleasure from competing against others and performing to the best of their ability and hopefully beating other people. Okay so this is where I want you to look inside yourself and ask yourself what motivates me to run? What motivates me to go out and do an event? Because the researchers found that what type a runner was, hedonist, resilience, competitors, was based on actually what motivates them and had no bearing on physical characteristics of their running like heart rate and overall performance. But the type of runner that they were did affect their perceived effort and most importantly, how much they enjoyed the event. Let's go over the three types of runners so you can identify with which one you are a little better. And just before I actually go over them, I think we're gonna find that there is a little bit of each of them in all of us, but I think we're gonna find that we fall into one category a little more than another. And also it's gonna depend on what event we're doing. Bear with me, it'll make sense in just a second. So the hedonists participate in races so they can appreciate the nature. That is their primary reason for going out and running a race. Now remember, the article is talking about trail racing. So we are talking about being out in nature and the trees and the mountains and the streams and the animals and all that good stuff that goes with trail running. So that's their primary reason for doing this race. And the hedonist group, they enjoy the races more than anybody else. That is their perception of pleasure during the race is much higher because they're not focused solely on the actual race, the way a competitor might be. Instead, they're focused on their surroundings and they're actually enjoying it. So I think for me, I'm not really a hedonist most of the time because I don't live in a place where there's nature everywhere. Most of my runs are on roads, but I can identify times when I have been a hedonist. So for example, I was in Alaska a couple years ago and I didn't do any races while I was there, but I did go and run up in the mountains and I ran all these new trails and I was doing that without being pressured by time or distance. All I wanted to do was get up in the mountains, run these new trails, do something exciting. And my motivation for those runs were purely about the surroundings. I was actually running and I was enjoying where I was running. And it makes me think about marathons like the New York City Marathon, because you're gonna hear a lot of people that say, well, I just wanna go and I wanna enjoy the New York City Marathon. And I totally see why. The New York City Marathon is so iconic, has so many sites that you can go and run that race and just enjoy everything. You can enjoy your surroundings. You're gonna enjoy the thousands, the tens or hundreds of thousands of people that come out to cheer you along the way. And I think the New York City Marathon is a perfect example of running a race for the pure enjoyment of it. I've heard a lot of people say that they wanna go and run Boston and just enjoy the experience. My friends, I've run both, it is not the same. Boston is not nearly as enjoyable as New York City for the sights and the sounds and everything. Although there are people lining the whole way of Boston, you get to Boston by being a competitor. So all of a sudden turning into a hedonist at that race doesn't really make much sense. You know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments if I've offended anyone with that. And if you wanna go and run Boston just to enjoy it. The people that fall into the resilient group are those of people that look at the race like something they have to overcome. They find enjoyment in overcoming life's difficulties. And the race becomes like a microcosm of life. And the race is so 
challenging and it could be a long distance, it could be challenging terrain, but either way, it's something that they have to get over and that is what brings them joy. It gives them strength to move forward in other areas of their life. Now, I think this is important to note, but the people that fall into the resilient group had the lowest perceived rate of pleasure. Doesn't really make sense. They perceived pleasure the least out of all the groups. And they also had the lowest rate of perceived exertion. So they exerted themselves less and they enjoyed it less. And the reason is, is that for someone that falls into the resilient group, crossing the finish line is the ultimate goal. The training, the surroundings, the other competitors, those don't really play a part. They wanna to get to the end so they can check it off a list and have overcome the challenge that the race presents. Now, I think for me, when I experience what I would put myself in the resilient group is when I'm doing longer races. So if I'm doing an ultra marathon, and I'll take my 100 miler as an example. My main goal, after never having done a 100 miler before, my main goal was only to get to the finish line. And although I think my rate of perceived pleasure of the race was pretty high, at least for most of it, there were some dark times during the night, my main goal remained getting to the end so I could get that belt buckle, so I could check it off my list, so I could overcome this enormous barrier of running 100 miles in one go. The third group of runners that this study found was the competitors. Now the competitors, their main goal is to compete. They want to perform at the highest level possible and they want to compete against people of an equally high I love. These are the people that want to win. And if I had to predict, if I had to predict the comment section of this video, I think we're going to have most of the people fall into this category. Because when we're signing up for races, especially the shorter races, we are in competition with everybody else there. Now I know ultimately we're only competing against ourselves. There is nothing better than doing better than we have done before. But don't tell me you don't get a kick when you get first in your age group. But the people that are out there watching that have actually won races themselves, don't tell me it isn't a joy to win a race. So that's the competitor. They, just, they want to do well. They want to prove themselves against other people. That is the whole challenge of the race. That is what brings them joy. And the athletes that fall into this competitive group, their rate of perceived exertion is high. It is the highest out of the three groups. And even so, their pleasure, their rate of perceived pleasure during the race is also incredibly high. So clearly they're getting joy from exerting themselves and pushing themselves. And this next part is fascinating. And I want you to listen because this is going to be a part that is going to predict your future performance. It's going to predict your future athletic career. Because competitors were found more likely to give up than either hedonists or resilience. And they're more likely to quit trail running, so in this case, running after a couple of years. In fact, 47% of the athletes that fell into the competitor group had quit running two years after the study took place. Now remember, we are talking about an extremely small sample size, so it was probably no more than a couple of runners, but still, 47% is huge. Just take that information and put it in your pocket. So when you're thinking about continuing your running career, or even worse, you're thinking about giving up, maybe just changing what what motivates you, changing your perception of what motivates you is gonna encourage you to keep going. So of course, I wanna know from you guys, and the question itself is, um, well, if you've been paying attention, the question itself is gonna be pretty obvious. What are you, a hedonist, a resilient, or a competitor? Let me know in the comments below. I think I would put myself in the majority of a competitor's mindset, but I've noticed over the last couple of years, I am quickly moving into the more hedonist side of motivation. You know, it's funny because if I don't really think about it too much, I think I am a lot more hedonist than I really am. Because when I start thinking about what motivates me, the competition really does motivate me still. But I'm definitely getting away from that. Not like it was 10 years ago for me. All right, guys, I actually had a pretty good week of training. I guess you have to take great week of training with a pinch of salt because the running really wasn't very good. In fact, I only ran twice. And on my second run, which was only a mile, I gave up after a mile. I had actually set out to go out and run a 10K. And after a mile, I had a feeling in my ankle, the ankle that I just sprained. And although that feeling I had, it wasn't really dodgy. I wouldn't describe it as pain. It was just being aware. And it's not normal to be aware of one body part. So I knew that I was still recovering and it's probably best that I just stop running. So I took the rest of the week off and I just concentrated on the Peloton and cycling to get that cardio fix. And I'm pretty pleased with how my week went. Whenever I can get over 200 miles on the bike, it's always a pretty solid week. And it gives me a good feeling that I'm hopefully keeping up with my aerobic fitness on my downtime from running. Like last week, I also did a lot of yoga and a lot more weights than I usually do just because I had a little more time from not running. But guys, I've got to say, I'm not mad at being injured. This is just something that happens. If for some reason this is the first video you're watching of mine, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then go back and check out the videos of how I actually hurt my ankle. My friends, as always, I post new running videos at least twice a week. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.